How are we doing everyone? It's John again. Um, today I'm going to do a video on OSPF and how to configure virtual links. So, as you can see here, I've got a topology of, in the centre, I've got area 0, to the left, area 44, to the right, area 16, below that, area 34, and the bottom right, we've got area 55. Now, as it transpires, the area 55 will not be connected to the full OSPF database, it'll need a virtual link. I'll explain a bit about that a wee bit later on. Lastly, we've also got the loopback of R1, which is 1.1.1.1 slash 32. And the way we're going to have that come into OSPF is through the redistribute connected subnets command. So we can get some type 5 LSAs, um, uh, well, rather E2 routes. So let's just start and go for it. So the first thing we've got here is router 1, so we'll do a show IP route and the router ID will just make that all the ones, the network will be 192.168.1.0 and I'm assuming on this video you know how to configure OSPF so I'm just not going to bother explaining that. Right, okay, so the actual loopback, remember, I said I'm going to redistribute the connectors, so I'll do redistribute connected subnets and that should provide that as an E2 route. So let's move on to the next router. We've got router 2 down the bottom here. And conf t, oh, oh my god, my titans, this bloody keyboard. Do show IP route. OSPF, process ID of 1, all the 2s for the router ID, network 192.168.1.0. And we should have a neighbour adjacency pop up with router 1. And we'll also configure the 34, that's number 1 up. And make that area 34. Okay, that's that one. Let's move to router 3 on the left. And we'll do router ID, all the threes, network 192.168.1.0, wildcard mask is the same, that's area zero and that should form an adjacency. And we'll also put in rather 10.0.44.0 with the slash 24 mask and we'll make that area 44. And let's go to router 4. To show IP route. Okay, and that's going to be router oh, OSPF1, router ID, all the fours, network 192.168.1.0. Make that area zero, and we'll also do area 16 for this one here on the left. And let's move to router 5, which is this one here. This is just going to be in area 16. So router ID, all the fives. Network 172.16.0.0.0.0.255.255, area 16, adjacency, should come up with 4. And let's go to router 6. And the router ID is all the sixes, and we'll do a network with 34, 34, 34.0, 255, and 34. There we go. And we also need to configure this area here, which is area 55. So we'll do network 55. I'll make that area 55. Okay. And we'll go to router 7, conf do show IP route. So as you can see here, we've also got the loopback we need to configure. We'll also put that in area 55 just to keep things simple. So router OSPF1, router ID, all the 7s, and we'll do network 55. Oh. I'll make that area 55. 
and we'll do networks all the sevens and it's a slash 32 so that's going to be all the zeros and again in area 55 and lastly we've got root array on the left here this one here and that's just in area 44 but uh, ID and let's do network 10 0 44 0 and an adjacent so you should pop up there you go right so that's me quickly configured the actual OSPF network for all the routers so if you look at it from router one's perspective show IP route you'll notice that it's got connectivity obviously to the 192.168.1.0 because it's connected to that directly as it has with the loopback but it's got an inter-area connection with the 34 network which is this one here area 34 it's got a connection with the 172.16 which is the one to its right which is this one here and it's also got a connection to the 10.0.44.0 which is the one on the left You'll notice, however, that there is no connection to Area 55 and it can't see the loopback of all the 7s and I'll just demonstrate that by trying to ping to all the 7s. There'll be no connectivity here. And the reason is that with OSPF, all the areas need to be connected. They need to kind of flow through Area 0. So the way I like to visualize this myself personally, when I'm drawing these little um, these little uh, shapes, these squares and rectangles and whatnot to help me visualize the OSPF area, to me to quickly eyeball it, the way I do is I just make sure an area touches an area zero ABR. So I'll show you what I mean. This is how I eyeball it. That's an area zero ABR. It's got an interface in area zero. This one here, this one here as does this one, these four here, okay? So if the area touches that, then anything in that area is fine. So area 16, this one here, that touches an area zero ABR. So I know anything in area 16 at an eyeball's glance is fine. So R5, it's completely in area 16, that's fine. Same here, anything in area 44, area 44 touches an area zero ABR. So anything within that is fine. Area 34, similarly, is exactly the same that touches an area 0 ABR, however, area 55 doesn't, it touches a router which is connected to one but it doesn't directly touch an area 0 ABR, so I know that this router, or rather anything within this area, will not be connected to the full OSPF database. So if I go into router 7 and I do a show IP route, you'll just have connected routes here. See what I mean? It's not actually fully um, integrated with the OSPF database. So the way to do that, the way to fix that rather, is to use something called a virtual link. Now a virtual link really is a kind of bolt-on type thing. It shouldn't be in your actual design. It's Virtual links come about usually due to poor design, which with this would be. But sometimes it's, unavo it's kind of unavoidable to actually completely correct and redraw the whole network. And you kind of need to kind of retroactively just bolt-on a way to make the network work. So the way that's going to happen is we're going to actually have to build a virtual link so area 55 doesn't touch an area 0 ABR, but how does it get to area 0? It would have to flow through area 34 to get to area 0. So area 34 is going to be a transit area for us. So we're going to have to configure a virtual link through this area. And from there, area 5 can now connect to the backbone area, which is area 0. So the way to configure this is you need to go to both routers within area 34 and you need to specify the area which will be a transit area which will be area 34 and from router 2's perspective it needs to connect to its adjacent router within that area which is going to be router 6. Now the key thing here is you don't actually specify the IP address so for example I would not specify area 34 a virtual link and then put in the IP address of say 34.34.34.2 and uh, vice versa, from router 6's perspective, area 34, virtual link 34.34.34.1, you don't do the IP address, you do the router ID. Now remember I configured each one in a simple format such that router 2 has got a router ID of 2.2.2.2 .2 .2 .2 .2 .2 .2 .2 
and router 6 has got an ID of 6.6.6.6. So the way we're going to have to do that, let's just, in fact, it's quicker if I just do it this way. I'll just show it. So, router 2's perspective, we're going to build the transit area through area 34 and connect to router 6, which is router ID is all the 6's. So we go into the OSPF process ID we're in, and we just simply do area 34, the transit area, virtual link, and we're going to connect to 6.6.6. Okay, control C. And do the same on router 6. If we go here and we do conf t, go into the OSPF process ID, and we do area 34, the transit area, and we do virtual link, and we specify the router ID, which is all the twos. and we should establish a virtual link. Okay, and if you notice you do a show IP OSPF neighbor, you'll actually see we've got a virtual link here, the OSPF virtual link, and it's connected to router ID 2.2.2.2. Okay, so let's have a look. How does that affect the actual network? Well, if we go to, say, the perspective of router 8 on the left here, can that now see all the 7s? Well, it can. See? Enter area, all the 7s. Now remember, router 7, that only was shown connected links. What's going to happen now? It's going to see the full database because it is seen, it even sees the external E2 routes, the type 5 LSAs up here, the connected subnet. It sees the entire network now. Now here's the thing. That is the basic configuration of virtual links. But I just want to make one final point just on... Um, configuring uh, stub areas and totally stubby areas with this. So, some people have confusion on this. You can actually make this area here, which is running through the virtual link, you can make that stub area, because if you look at that, there's only one exit way into the network. Similarly with area 16 and area 44. So the next hop will be router 3, the next hop for router 5 will always be router 4, the next hop for router 7 will always be router 6. So you can actually build stubs. So let's just do that actually quickly. If we go on to say, where are we? Conf T and we do router OSPF1 and what will we do? We'll do area 55 oh, and we'll stub that. And similarly, if we go into area, not oh, rather area, we're going to do router 6. And do the same, conf t router OSPF1, and we do area 55, and we'll stub that. So how's that going to affect the actual network? Well, it's going to replace the E2 route up here with a default route, but you will still have connectivity. You can still do that in a virtual link. So we'll see here the E2 routes are gone, and we've now got a default route for that. So can you still ping the all the ones? Well, yes, you can. It's still fine. Still have full connectivity. And similarly, if you actually go into router 6, and if we do router OSPF1, and we do a no area 55 stub, and we just do a, what we do actually, we'll do area 55 stub, no summary. We'll make it a totally stubby area. Does that work? It'll take out all the inter area OSPF routes as well as the E2 route, but you'll see that we still have full connectivity. We've got I now got a default route for the entire network, but we can still ping all the ones. So you actually can. Now here's a caveat: you cannot use the transit area as a as a stub area. That's where the confusion lies. Some people think you can't make this a stub. You can. Just likewise, you can make this area a stub and this area a stub. It's the transit area, and I'll just try to configure that and show you what happens. It'll actually block me. So if I go into router 2, and I try to make OSPF, I make area 34, the transit area stub. There we go. This is the area which cannot be configured to be a stub, and that is simply it. So as you can see here, with virtual links, you can still have full connectivity to the entire network, and the way to remember it, the way I can eyeball it is if the area this big square, or rectangle rather, 
touches and area zero ABR, it's fine. Now the way we could actually before, if we didn't want to actually configure virtual links, since this network is so small, you could probably make everyone an area zero and it would be fine anyway. But what I would do would be just extend area 34. See if you made all these interfaces here in area 34. Well, this would be one big rectangle and that one big rectangle would touch an area zero ABR and you would not need a virtual link. It would be fine on its own. So that's just a quick way how I like to eyeball it. And that's a quick way to configure virtual links with a small explanation as to how they pertain to stub areas. So, yep, that's the end of the video. And I hope that was informative. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye.